It's a challenging thing at the moment because there are so many blogs out there. Um, you are entering into a very cluttered space and so um, to break out above what everyone else is doing can be quite difficult. But the rewards are there also uh, in many ways. Uh, you can make a living from it, but perhaps even more um, powerful than that is the influence that you can grow through um, having a successful blog. The, uh, the challenges uh, um, there's, there's so many challenges. I think the biggest one is sticking to it and uh, staying with it even in the hard times and when the creativity is not coming and uh, when people are trolling and insulting you. I think there's so many rewards. I mean the fact that I'm, I'm saying this from Austin, Texas where I live in the UK, that's a reward in itself. Uh, I have the freedom to go to all of my daughter's uh, school things, whereas before I had a 95 job and I had to ask permission for the slightest thing. Um, and that's even when you don't get into the financial stuff. But the financial stuff doesn't come straight away. You meet lots of nice people, either through the internet or in person. You get to really get into your, your subject. You learn a lot. I had a photography blog, not as big as uh, Darren's, and I learned all about photography through the community. So there's tons of benefits, it's fantastic. Probably the, the biggest one that I hear is that it's easy money. Um, I have people coming to me semi-regularly saying, I've just quit my job uh, to go pro as a blogger. And you unpack that a little bit with them and find out that they're actually yet to start the blog or they've only just started. Uh, it actually takes a year, two years, three years, and even then there's no guarantees that you'll be successful with the blog. I think uh, one of the biggest misconceptions is that it's a personal diary. I see on the, the news and in the media a lot of the time people mocking bloggers as being armchair quarterbacks or uh, writing about uh, what their cat did today or what they had for us as a sandwich. And um, you know, there's, There is some of that but it, not so much. I think another misconception is that you have to be this fantastic Shakespearean writer or a journalist. You know, you just have to express yourself and get your point across. Uh, and I think a, another misconception is that it's going to be easy and that you're going to make a million dollars overnight. And uh, people think because of our book title that that's what we're saying, but actually all the way through the book we actually say, look, you need to stick with it, you need to do the right things, you have to choose the right market. Um, you know, it's not going to be easy, it's not going to be overnight. Yeah, I think uh, more people understand what a blog is now than ever before. There's a number of changes, lots of little updates, but uh, two of the main additions to the book are one on social media, uh, and social media and your blog. Since we wrote the first edition, uh, social media has exploded. We've got Twitter, Facebook is continuing to grow incredibly, YouTube, um, and bloggers are now using these social media tools to grow their blog, to drive traffic to their blog, to build their brand and to grow their influence and even to make money. So uh, that, that's something that we explore in a new chapter. And the other new chapter is a, a, a chapter called Taking Your Blog to the Next Level. And it's a case study of one of my blogs, Digital Photography School, where I walk readers through um, the beginnings and the, the four years that it's taken to grow that blog to the point that it's at now. In the first two years, I really focused on four major things. The first one was building the most useful content that I possibly could. Um, content that is solving problems for people, content that is enhancing their lives in some way, uh, content that is either entertaining or, or a how-to type piece. If, you, if you're writing that type of content, people will want to come back and they'll want to share it with their friends. So you want to write content that uh, people, their first reaction is to want to share this. I need to tell someone about this. If you can consistently produce that type of content, people will come back. The second thing you want to do, particularly in the early days of your blog, is get out there and be promoting your content. You can write the most useful blog in the world and no one will know about it unless you actually seed that content out onto the web. So you want to ask the question, who do I want to reach and where are they gathering online? 
So for my photography side, it was about getting into sites like Flickr or other photography blogs and forums and actually building a presence there. Not spamming them, not just leaving links, but actually being useful in those places so people will want to check out who you are. That actually drives traffic back to your blog and helps you to become more influential. The third thing I'd say you need to do is to build community on your blog. Blogs are, are wonderful in that they are very interactive spaces. Um, most blogs by default have a comment section. So drive people to that. Don't just write useful content, but actually engage them with a question. Ask them uh, to respond to a poll. Start a debate. Um, get people engaging by telling their story or sharing a photo or sharing a video of their own. Once you get people interacting in that way, they're investing into your blog. And again, they're more likely to come back because they've put something of themselves onto it. And the fourth thing I'd suggest that you do is um, Build into your blog some way for people to um, become loyal to it. So you want to capture their details some way. Um, a lot of bloggers use RSS feeds to give people a way to subscribe to their blog, and that's great, but I prefer to get people's email addresses and, and to develop a newsletter alongside my blog. So on my blogs, I send out a weekly newsletter that, that points people to new stuff on the blog, but also um, points them to competitions and to the community aspects of the blog as well that drives them back to it every week. If you do that every week, people feel like they're in a relationship with you. And again, they'll, they'll become very loyal to your blog and they'll want to drive other people to it as well. So if you're doing those four things, I think you've, you're building really great foundations to then monetize it and to, to build a profitable blog on top of that. So um, three big tips, uh, and it all goes together. It's uh, an integrated uh, approach. Is uh, I always tell my uh, clients, my coaching clients and uh, consulting clients to not just think about the, the end goal, the, think about the process. And it's so the attraction, retention and conversion. So with attraction you're trying to get uh, visitors, so what can you do to get traffic? So to get traffic you need to be where your audience is, where do your audience hang out and uh, go find them and bring them back home. With retention, you need to keep them interested. It's no good getting a first-time visitor and then them going away and never coming back. So you have to get them to subscribe and you have to get them onto an uh, email newsletter, get them to follow you on Twitter, anything to keep them involved and in listening to you. And then conversion is where you're going to get your money from. You need to sell them something, you need them to see ads or click on ads, or you need them to click on affiliate links and then go away and purchase something. So how are you going to put that offer in front of them without being spammy, but by getting them to see the value of the offer so that they take it up? So it's three tips in one. You have to think in terms of attraction, retention and conversion. And if you do those things, then you're not putting too much emphasis in the wrong place and you're closing that loop.